Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Let's talk some mountain weather and the final storm system is spinning through the Rockies as we speak. This is Jackson Hole, another nine on the summit in the last 24 hours, five at Mid Mountain. What a great stretch. What a great week it's been. Um, I was reading through the notes there at Jackson Hole, 40 inches in the last week. So they're at three feet or more, which is exactly what Jackson Hole needed. Started out very, very slow across a lot of the inner mountain. Now things have picked up across the Tetons. Look at that, 213 at the, at the summit for the season. Uh, and we've had a good run in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons as well down in uh, Utah. Let me take you to Alta. So, so far for the month of January, you can see we started at about 87. Now we're up at 121. So that's about three feet, two to three feet up there in the Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon. So, I mean, that's exactly what we've needed up there as well. But uh, they are they picked up another, let's see, there it is, six inches uh, in the last uh, 12 to 24 hours. So um, they're at 127 at Alta now for the season. So working our way up, uh, it really took a lot uh, to bring us up where we were, uh, now closer to where we should be in a lot of these areas. In fact, while we're at it, let me show you. So this is the uh, snow water equivalent. In other words, we're looking at the snowpack here. This is at Snowbird. This is the Snowtail site up there at uh, Snowbird. Look at the black line. So where it was, it was right down there bouncing on January 1st, bouncing off the very lowest snowpack uh, on record at the start of January. Because of this latest storm cycle, the line basically went straight up. We added about three feet of accumulation. We'll just say we added three feet. And now we're at 105% of normal. So it has been an extraordinary turnaround uh, because of this latest storm cycle. So it's excellent to see that. Let me show you uh, Aspen Snowmass in Colorado. We've got a wave of snow. All of this storm system is going to be sliding through Utah, Wyoming, and then pivoting through Colorado today, tonight, tomorrow morning. So it's really just starting to snow, but I'll show you the wave. Here is radar across the west, so blue is snow, and you can kind of see the wave right there that's just now hitting Pitkin County, Aspen snow mass. There's still a little bit of snow crossing the Tetons and the Wasatch, but it's going to be much, much lighter today. The bulk of your accumulation came through yesterday, last night, and very early this morning. Um, so lighter back here. Things will be increasing, though, in Colorado. The snow will be increasing. And here's Colorado's radar. So you can see the spin. There's definitely an area of low pressure right here with that northeast uh, wind driving some rain and snow production across Denver and I-25 this morning. And that'll be the case on and off most of today and probably hugging the foothills and the Palmer Divide, those areas west and south of Denver tonight into early tomorrow morning. Uh, but there's another wave of energy coming in to meet the low. So that'll be increasing the snow across I-70 through the course of the day. My expectation is that the Continental Divide, Loveland, Winter Park, A Basin, down into Summit County, I-70 Vale, back towards Aspen Snowmass, this area will probably see four to eight inches of accumulation today, tonight, tomorrow morning. That's the way it looks to me. Um, let me take you to satellite, give you the big view. All right, here's water vapor. So um, the action in the atmosphere here in the mid-levels is in the whites and the blues. So there's our low. Here comes the wave behind it, um, diving in to meet it. So we've got essentially the trough and the dip in the jet moving in. This is the final storm of the cycle. Then we're going to build in high pressure across the west. Let me show you what the forecast radar looks like. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard today, Thursday, January 8th. Move this ahead. All right, here's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. So the first low is moving away, and then you've got the trough or the dip coming in behind it with that energy. So there's still some snow showers across the Tetons and the Wasatch, but not as much accumulation. 
and still snow across Colorado. Moving ahead. All right, here's 5 a.m. So this is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Friday, January 9th. Um, there's a little bit of snow here across Denver in the Front Range. Most of it's on the west side of town and on the south side of town over the elevated terrain. And you can kind of see the flow contracting back to the north. So there's still some snow up here across the northern tier. All right, here's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. Everything's starting to dry up, and high pressure is starting to win out across the west. And here it comes, the big dome. Uh, by 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday, it's in place, and I'm just going to run all the way out to the end here. This is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday, January 11th. It's all high pressure, guys, at that point, and it's going to run all the way through um, the 15th before we see any significant changes. So let's talk about the nitty-gritty. Um, okay, so final storm today through tomorrow morning. High pressure dome through the 15th. And then the pattern will probably shift or morph. And I talked about this yesterday. And it still looks like it's going to be the case now. It does turn active on or after 116, but only for a specific area. So the whole pattern will kind of back. And then there's going to be a north-northwest flow that sets up straight out of Canada through Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. And that's where we're going to see the snow line up. Right there. That's where it's going to be active on that eastern periphery. Um, I talked about Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon. They had three feet so far in January, roughly. Snowpack at 100%, roughly. Big turnaround. Here's your 15-day snow. Things really dry up. Nothing at Mammoth. Uh, most of the snow at Vail and snow mass is going to be happening in the next 48 hours. And then after that, um, we will start to see the snow increase again in those areas. Um, so I take a little bit of that back. Yes, there's going to be some snow, a, a lot of that that snows in the next 48 hours. But then as that flow turns out of the north, northwest, we will start to add additional accumulation. But it's going to come in short bursts in the extended forecast. In fact, you can see that down here in the timeline, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we'll get these light shots that come in. Um, but look at Alta. Look at Park City. All that's coming in the next 24 hours. So it's quite a different scenario for Utah versus Colorado. Utah versus Wyoming. Utah versus Montana. Utah will be out of the flow. So here's your best odds of snow accumulation. Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana. I added in the Pacific Northwest and Interior BC. So again, light to moderate today through tomorrow morning in Colorado. That storm moves away, and then that flow sets up, and I talked about those quick shots. Utah, it's one and done this morning. Idaho, one and done. Wyoming, you're a little more in the flow with additional shots, 113 and 117. Certainly Montana is very similar to Colorado with these shots coming on that quick, fast north-northwest flow. Um, uh, let's look at the time height. This is Arapaho Basin in Colorado. You're looking at a slice through the atmosphere, a vertical structure of the atmosphere. It's a three-day forecast. This is current, and you go in this direction into the future. So look at the big green tower. That's where the moisture is, and that's happening now. So that's going to be, most of the moisture will occur today in the central and northern mountains of Colorado and probably trickling into tomorrow morning. And a little bit hanging on over the Continental Divide. Afternoon of the 9th into the morning of the 10th. That's a shrouding effect. It's not necessarily a storm snow. This is more of an orographic hang-on snow. Residual snow. Um, over the Continental Divide. Okay, let's look at... And again, I'm thinking maybe 4 to 6, 4 to 8 inches. Alright, atmospheric pressure anomalies. 
up in the middle of the atmosphere? Are we looking at higher or lower than normal in pressures here? Higher or lower uh, versus normal. So these are lower than normal pressures. And this is on the 9th. That's the heart of the final storm system sliding through. Lower than normal. And then we look at higher than normal pressures. This is on 114, massive. Look at the tan colors come out. When the tan colors come out, atmosphere ain't playing. Um, this is a big high pressure. Now, and you can see what I'm talking about with this fast north-northwest flow on the periphery of the high and this low here. So the atmosphere is going to be... It's going, to be, it's going to be flying. It's going to be fast. So whatever energy runs down this, essentially this is where the jet's going to be running. It's going to, it's going to cruise right through Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and maybe a little bit into New Mexico. But that's where the action is going to be right there this, in, in respect to the West. Uh, 116, this would be an inflection point because the high has backed, retrograded a little bit, and it's still major. But look at the north-northwest flow. Now it's, it's much more robust. So again, whatever energy comes down the slide, essentially, is going to be fast. What does AI think? Does it agree? Well, here it is. Here's what we just looked at over here with this fast flow. Does it agree? Um, yeah, to some degree. Definitely lower the normal pressure. Just kind of nosing their way into Colorado and Wyoming parts of Montana. So there is a fast flow here. So there's some agreement. It's just not as deep. That's really the bottom line. Um, total precipitation over the next eight days. Uh, most of what you see here again across the inner mountain happens in the next 48 hours. The exception of that will be Montana, Wyoming, Colorado once that fast north-northwest flow sets up and we'll get these shots 14, 15, 16, 17. That's all liquid right there at eight days. Here's the 10 to 1 snow over the next eight days. So this takes us through the 16th, in other words. Yeah, and again, most of what you see here happens in the next 48 hours. Um, all of the big snow, the deep purple is at least six. Bright pink would be at least a foot. And these whites that you see coming out, that's at least two feet. But all of the whites contract back to the north. So they remove themselves from the from the inner mountain west, but uh, and then you can you can kind of see late in the game how some of that additional precip accumulates over Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. Let's go to the southwest vantage point. Total precipitation over the next eight days again, and especially in this area, it's easy to see. Watch it right there. Most of the precip occurs in the next forty eight hours. Here's my official snow forecast. So. Just the next 48 hours. Today, tomorrow. This is the total accumulation, next 48 hours. There's just a tiny bit early in California, and then that's it. And then it's, it's dry. In the Wasatch, again, this is all happening early today, uh, maybe through midday, but it's, it's much, much lighter. Uh, five at Bryan, Arizona Snow Bowl there at three. And Colorado, the storm snow, there it is. I mean, there's a bunch of fours, fives, and sixes as this low and some of the energy comes in with the trough. Uh, maybe another five or six up here in the Tetons. And then you can see all the other numbers. But look at the good numbers down in New Mexico. Six to 12. Great to see that with the, uh, the low kind of moving through. So that's phase one. Let me show you phase two. Uh, this is 110 through 116, and go back and I'll show you. There's 1819, 110, 116. Uh, notice how the flow shifts. I mean, look at it. This is exactly what I was saying on that sort of north-northwest flow. All the energy just slides down this thing. And through Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and it does spill into New Mexico to some degree. Um, so nothing out here through Utah, California, Nevada, Oregon, Arizona, but this is kind of interesting. When you've got two or three shots depositing snow into Colorado, so these numbers don't all come at one time, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that Vail East up to the Continental Divide, when you add up all of those little shots, you may end up with 
8 to 12 inches, somewhere right in there. Not as much backs its way to the west over the Tetons. Um, and Montana, it's pretty light. Uh, I'm looking at some decent numbers up here into BC, and Alieska is going to get crushed. So that's how the pattern shifts. Now, once we get into 116, 117, 118, we'll have to see what the atmosphere decides to settle on. It's not totally clear at this point. Um, okay, here's the northeast. So uh, total eight day snow, 10 to 1 snow. Deep purple's at least six inches. Bright pink would be at least a foot. Um, there's some storm snow. A lot of this is just kind of clipper snow. So it's light shots over and over again. Here's my forecast through the 16th by the close of business on the 16th. Potentially a foot over J and 15 over Tremblant, 10 over Snow Ridge, 8 Washington. Those are the highest numbers. And then you've got 3, 4, 5, 6 down here, Mount Snow, Ragged, Okemo, Killington, Sugarbush, uh, a little bit more over Stowe and Mad River, Whiteface. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. Today, tomorrow, get out there and enjoy it while the pattern is still active across uh, a lot of the central Rockies. Um, great day today in the Wasatch, uh, the Tetons, and and you'll be and things will be picking up in Colorado today and into tomorrow morning. Thanks, guys, for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.